Hello my soccer universe and let's look at what happened in the Premier League this weekend. I know that at the moment of recording this Brighton and Southampton are still playing or are playing at the moment. Yeah, it's about approaching half time, but I will give you the result next week because uh, otherwise I won't uh, make it with all the videos that I have to do. This is one of the weeks where all the big leagues have a Monday night game, which I personally do not like all that much. Okay, I'm wearing Spurs. I've been talking about Spurs a lot and yeah, um, apologies to all the Arsenal fans watching this channel, but yeah, we'll have to talk Spurs uh, for sure at the moment because uh, headline number one, of course, is the fans are back. Headline number two is Spurs stay top after winning the North London Derby, the third big fixture in a row. And the question is, of course, can Spurs stay up there? Headline number three is United mounts another late comeback. What would it be if they could just starting playing from the beginning? And I think headline number four is that Liverpool, even with a defense where all the big boys are seemingly missing, are still winning quite easily over Wolves last headline we also go to the Netherlands the top four teams picked up an aggregated one point single point rather amazing and that one was hanging long 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 in the ropes but we'll get to the Netherlands at, at the end so yeah let's start it started with Aston Villa Newcastle being postponed due to Covid so uh, not great news uh, Burnley Everton Burnley took an early lead Everton could equalize Everton doesn't look all that right ever since they had the Merseyside Derby have to say uh, also Manchester City Fulham what can I say it was the De Bruyne show he assists the first uh, by Raheem Sterling he converts a penalty he has another chance where he hits the bar Again, uh, when Manchester City are beating a team lower level, for me, this is almost not newsworthy unless they hit 6 7 or, or whatever. So, we'll start actually uh, our kind of review for this with West Ham against Manchester United. Because that was remarkable in the sense that A. Fornals hit the post uh, kind of midway through the first half had many chances, Suchik scores, makes it 1-0 in the 38th at a point where they probably should have led by 2 or 3. They even had big chances early in the uh, second half. West Ham should have had the game in the back by the 60th minute. Why do I say 60th minute? Well, because there are uh, certain Ole Gullosarsha super subs thus having already made some very important uh, substitutions. Bruno Fernandes coming in for Van der Beek, Rashford coming in for Cavani already half time and then Juan Mata. And with Bruno Fernandes the game changes and he passes. It was not a necessary uh, huge assist. Pass to Pogba who unleashes an unbelievable shot. Uh, one that, 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 typical Pogba goal. I have to say it. Uh, but he's not always showing up. I mean, Pogba is one of those players. He makes a good team better. But he will not lift a mediocre team to good. This is what you need to realize with Pogba and this is what I had to learn the hard way uh, watching him over the years. Uh, he makes a really a good team or a really good team better, but he's not one that can lift you. So it's 1-1 one, one, and then Mason Greenwood with a really nice uh, way, the way he uh, gets the ball, com uh, converts it and scores it, it's just three minutes later turns the game around. Manchester United of course playing in those wonderful zebra jerseys, um, yeah, looking at those. and. West Ham must have been flabbergasted. I mean, this was really, I think they, they, this was actually the first game with spectators in the Premier League um, since the lockdown. Um, and yeah, Rashford adds a third and Manchester United has another escape. How often will they have one? We'll see. They have a pretty big game coming up next week. Kind of interesting to see what will happen there. Then Chelsea Leeds United. I actually in the end decided not to watch that, that one. I mean, uh, Leeds take a very early lead through Bamford. Um, and then in the eighth minute, I think it, um, Timo Werner had one of those misses that are unbelievable. First, first of all, I mean, just needs to get it in the uh, net. He, I think, misses it and he touches it and puts it on the bar. Wonderful clearance. I mean, that's what I am not liking about Timo Werner. He's always was already the last two, two, three years, always built as the next big German striker in a way. But I never, yes, he makes his goals, but I never felt that he's this uh, super goal threat. And that was just more uh, in that regard. Gerudo makes his goal. 
fifth one uh, this week to make it 127 from that moment. Um, it was only Chelsea who really nicely escaped the press by, um, you know, playing good possession football, quickly converting, um, you know, a quick passing foot football to pass yourself out of that. And Chelsea is one of those teams, they have the quality. And while we will talk about Spurs, I think Chelsea at the moment are still over overlooked. I think they are a team that have quite a deep squad and not many injuries at the moment. I wouldn't be surprised if Chelsea will actually in the end get a title challenge. Kurt Zuma with a header in the 61st and late on Pulisic make it 3-1. Very well-deserved victory for Chelsea. Crystal Palace gets the uh, biggest ever win in the Premier League <laughs> against West Brom, uh, but it was 1-1. One, one. Then there was a red card basically um, for a West Brom player. On review, I thought it was all right, but I hear many people saying it's a little bit contentious. So yeah, um, I hear you, but I still think it, it, it was all right. And that tilted the game into uh, Palace's favor, 5-1. Big win for them after losing a few in a row. Leicester also finally getting a win in Sheffield United, but it was more or less the last second goal by Jamie Vardy that saved them. And then he destroyed the corner flag. Uh, obviously, he was born in Sheffield, a uh, Wednesday fan, and he didn't care much for United. He takes it a little bit personal, those things. Uh, he's still more a fan than anything else. Spurs Arsenal. Um, it's so funny. You knew how Spurs is going to approach this game. You knew it. They have Kane, they have Son, they're going to hit you on the counter. They set the trap. I mean, whatever open to see, and Arsenal steps right into it. I have to say, uh, the first goal by Son, that was a brilliant shot, but who is there to actually tackle him or a little... He seems like he has acres of space. space. I mean, he moves left, left and right. No one is really challenging him, he, and he can take a great aim. It was a wonderful shot to make it 1-0. Uh, and then, so that was assisted by Kane, although Kane just made the midfield pass out on the side, and I think most of the work was definitely uh, <laughs> Son. Um, the assist of Son towards Kane, though, was more substantial right before the half, and then Kane just puts it in from a kind of acute angle, and it's 2-0, and the game is done and dusted. Yes, Obama Young and Lacazette had both their chances, but there was nothing really there. Uh, so I have to say... Arsenal, yes, they might have all had all the possession and so on, but uh, Spurs absolutely, absolutely dominated uh, that game in their own way. Getting the points, getting the 30 wins. This was the third big Premier League game in a row. They had City at home, they won, Chelsea away, they got a draw, they now have Arsenal at home. Although one might question at the moment if Arsenal is really that big of a game, because Arsenal, I've been talking there uh, in the last two videos, they are a rather disappointment overall. Surely didn't help that uh, the stadium was only with Spurs fans, but that was too big spec if you have only 2,000 people there. And they actually, the atmosphere was not all that bad. I mean, I know it kind of from um, uh, games in Austria. If there are 2,000 people in the people in the ground, that actually makes some noise. That's mostly enough to get something nice going. And, you know, the English uh, like to sing a lot there as well but yeah my question is can Spurs keep it up and I have to say they have rather the tough schedule I mean uh, fortunately for them they're through in the Europa League because the next game is at Antwerp but they might want to get first place then they have a uh, should be an easy one against Crystal Palace and then they play Liverpool so they have two away games then they play Leicester uh, and then Wolves away and that's and then they end the year uh, against Fulham at home so I think we will know by uh, the new year we will know whether Spurs really, really still is in there. I find it rather in interesting and part of me would actually like to see that Spurs is challenging up there. But let's see if they will do something Spursy. I am pretty sure about that. Uh, Liverpool, on the other hand, I mean, I've talked about Chelsea. I oh, we have to add Liverpool in that whole uh, discussion. But for first of all, the game Wolves played in the wonderful away jerseys. I still, I'm still not hating them. I'm still not hating them. But they look rather odd for Wolves, I have to say. Um, the first goal came from a clear defensive error where, you know, he wants to chase his down, turns wrong and he falls right to Salah, who smells the goal and converts, makes it 1-0. And when Gini Wijnaldum with a wonderful shot makes it 2-0, it was only going to go one way. Um, I am actually quite surprised uh, that uh, Kelleher in goal, 
he kept a clean sheet. And a defense of Robertson, Fabinho, Matip and Williams is also keeping a clean sheet. Liverpool digging deep and still having quite some uh, punch. I mean, there's also Jones playing. When Alden Henders, I mean, that uh, was the three on top, of course, the Holy Trinity. Uh, that always adds quality. But Liverpool seems to be astonishingly resilient. And I will still say that we have talked Chelsea, we have talked Spurs. I mean, Man City, at the moment, we don't know. But uh, as we see, I think Man City is still to be considered the deepest squad. But Liverpool is really surprising. I think Liverpool can make a run. Um, also, kudos for Nelson Semedo for scoring one of the most bizarre on goals by, you know, he's tackling, tackling and tackling it into the goal. And that was weird uh, in every regard. So, yeah, let's look at the table ahead of um, the South Coast clash. This is now how the actual table is. And we'll see that the both Manchester teams are moving up and they will play now in the Manchester Derby. And we'll see uh, if there's a winner, that winner will definitely join the top four in their uh, challenge going forward, City of course being favored in there. Lots of movement in the midfield, but uh, not too much. Uh, you know, you cannot say too too much because there are games in hands uh, to, to, to play and so on. And for that reason, I decided and I said it last time, uh, last weekend in the La Liga review, I should make an adjusted table. And that's exactly what I did. And that will tell us a little bit more where things are. So I actually divided all the goals goals forward, goals against, goal difference and points by the num number of games I made a new table. And you see, according, according to the errors, if the team is not placed better than in the actual table. And we see Southampton and Aston Villa. Yes, Southampton has, has only one game in hand, but they are rising quite some up. But it's still, the, um, you see kind of the top six are relatively close together uh, with Spurs and Liverpool still a uh, little bit in front uh, and then the midfield changes around the rest remains actually quite uh, even. I actually like this table a lot more because it really gives you, uh, you know, it adjusts for the games played. So I will feature this from now on, especially in the big leagues when there are many games missing because uh, it becomes a little bit tedious to look at. Now we know that if United City keep up their performance, they will still remain in fifth and sixth, meaning a draw or something, uh, something to that uh, uh, regard. If Aston Villa can keep it up, but they have to play one of the Manchester teams, they might actually go as high as eighth. So there you go. Next round, as I said, it's Orion on Saturday. The big Manchester Derby. It's played at Old Trafford. So let's see how this will go. Uh, I have to say, other than that, I mean, the Everton Chelsea sounds like, but Everton is not all doing good. Uh, Liverpool should have it rather easy. We said our Spurs will rather have it easy. Um, so it all points for me to Leeds against West Ham, and Leeds has also been everything but convincing at the moment. Let's move to the Eredivisie. A weird round. Look at it. We had uh, on top Ajax losing at home to Twente. And I saw that game. Yes, Ajax had some chances, but Twente rather deservedly won that one. They really went for the jugular in the end and won this one rather convincing. I mean, uh, Minich gets the first goal on a car, car contract and Tadic with a penalty. Stupid foul of um, given. But then again, many uh, gets it very late on the winner and there were more chances for 20. There was uh, quite the chances there to uh, decide it even sooner. Ajax clearly a little bit preparing for that final against Atalanta in the midweek. Second place team Vitesse with a win could have uh, gone up to um, Ajax. No, they lost two ones as well. Feyenoord, nil nil against Heracles. Also surprising. AZ, 1-2 versus Groningen. And then Herrenveen against PSV. I saw how to do that. That was the first time. It was all PSV. They only get a goal. Wonderfully uh, played goal uh, through Götze. Yes, that Götze from the 2014 World Cup final to make it 1-0. But in the second half, they suddenly tur uh, Herrenveen turn, turns around. Wehrmann and Van Bergen turn around. There was even a big chance where the goalkeeper has such a, a great kick out. What was this? The 20... There was one, uh, really, the goalkeeper, great chances. Herrenveen then had the chance actually to win this one. Yeah, the, that kicker was from uh, was uh, from 20. Sorry, sorry about that, but, uh, you know, everything kind of goes together. Too many things going on. But Herrenveen, 
turned the game around through, uh, through Fehrmann and Van Bergen and had then in stoppage time the chance to win it. Big chance and right on the uh, counter act from that PSV equalized and then it got even crazier. Uh, there was a penalty given and a red card for uh, a penalty for uh, Herrn Wayne and a red card for PSV but then there's an offside. So it all doesn't, there's no penalty, no red record. And then PSV could have won it uh, late, late on as well. Absolute nuts game. In the Netherlands, we don't have an adjusted table here yet. Nothing changed except that with that loss, Ajax lost a few percentage points of winning a championship. It's still very, very comfortable uh, for, for them. Yes, PSV got now within three points. And yeah, AZ and Utrecht are the only teams that are in there. AZ losing the first game of the season. So the only unbeaten team is Feyenoord. But they have too many draws. That's always not a good thing. In the next round, uh, I also think that there is not a huge clash. I mean, 20 AZ now is interesting. I should win against Zwolle, but should is always. Let's see what Vitesse and Herrnwein uh, do. And, you know, Wendler against Feyenoord. Goal alert, goal alert, goal alert. I don't think it will be 13 there either. And PSV plays Utrecht. So yeah, this ends our run through Northwestern Europe for now, for the leagues that I'm in interested in, um, at least for this channel. Let me know if you can add anything to the games that were happening uh, this weekend. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a wonderful day. Bye!